Hello everyone, do you know that venous thromboembolism, VTE, is a major and potentially fatal complication among medical inpatients? Today, I am going to introduce you to VTE prophylaxis. Accurate assessment of VTE risk is critical to reduce incidence of venous thromboembolism. Venous thromboembolism includes deep vein thrombosis, DVT and pulmonary embolism. Approximately 25% of all cases of VTE are related to hospitalization, and up to 75% of them occur in medical patients. High-risk medical inpatients not receiving thromboprophylaxis develop pulmonary embolism in up to 1.5% of them. 5-15% of high-risk medical inpatients not receiving prophylaxis develop deep vein thrombosis. That is equal to 3 in every 20 patients. Methods of VTE prophylaxis can be divided into mechanical and pharmacological. Mechanical prophylaxis is a valuable adjunct to pharmacologic methods in patients with high risk of VTE, but study shows that it is less effective than its pharmacological counterpart when used as a stand-alone modality. It serves more as the preferred alternative in patients who are ineligible for pharmacological therapy. Low molecular weight heparin has become the thromboprophylactic agent of choice. Enoxaparin or Clexane can be given subcutaneously at 40 mg once a day. The dosage will have to be halved, if the creatinine clearance of the patient is between 15 to 30. Fondaparinux can also be used, at 2.5 mg once daily. Unfractionated heparin is no longer the preferred first-line agent as it requires a continuous administration with close monitoring and dose adjustment. Even though the benefits of thromboprophylaxis is well known, the decision to prescribe in clinical practice, especially in complex medical patients, can be challenging. Patients seen in medical wards differ from surgical patients in many ways. Most of them have many comorbidities including renal or hepatic impairment, they also have increased risk of bleeding. The Padua Prediction Score PPS, has been created to guide clinicians in identifying high-risk patients that warrant prophylaxis. This score has been introduced by the Malaysia VTE Clinical Practice Guideline since 2013. Take note that Padua Prediction Score should not be applied to critically ill patients. This scoring system is easily available across common medical calculators available such as MD Calculator and MedCalX. Age, immobility, active cancer, infections and acute inflammatory states are known major risk factors for hospitalization-related VTE. A score of less than 4 will be considered to be in the low-risk category, patients will not require VTE prophylaxis. However, if the score is 4 or more, patient will be categorized in the high-risk category and therefore VTE prophylaxis is recommended. Low-risk patients are predicted to have a 0.3% rate of developing symptomatic VTE in 90 days, whereas high-risk patients have a 11% rate of developing VTE within 90 days according to the Padua Prediction Score. What about the risk of bleeding? To address this, clinical judgment is required to weigh the risk of thrombosis versus bleeding events with thromboprophylaxis. For this purpose, the improved bleeding risk score can be used. A score of 7 or more is high risk of bleeding risk. If the improved score is 7 or more, the patient has a high risk of bleeding. Anticoagulant is not recommended and mechanical prophylaxis is preferred. Once bleeding risk is deemed to be low as patient recovers, prophylactic anticoagulant can be used. In ward, recovering medical patients should be encouraged to begin ambulating as early as possible as frequent limb physiotherapy and early ambulation will help with reducing risk of venous thromboembolism. I hope you have learned something about VTE prophylaxis. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments section down below. Remember that the prediction score serves as a guide for our clinical judgment. Clinicians should always weigh the benefit and risk for the patient's best interest. If you find this session helpful, please give us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for more contents. See you next week.